Welcome to Creatively Christian, a podcast by Theophany Media, where we inspire, inform, educate, and empower creative Christians of all types. I'm one of your hosts, Brandon Hollingsworth. Andrea Sandifer is a singer-songwriter and one of the amazing hosts of Creatively Christian. She speaks with Bill Brooks about the challenges of songwriting, plus she plays and sings an original song. Welcome to Creatively Christian. I'm your host, Bill Brooks, bringing you another Creative Christian. Today, our guest is actually one of our hosts. Uh, She is a singer-songwriter from Alaska. She is a Christian creativity curator who has a new Christmas album. This is in November. And (laughs) she is also a co-writer for our theme music. Please introduce Please allow me to introduce Andrea Sandefer. Awesome. Andrea. Well, thanks, Bill. Hi, Bill. How's it going? Good. How are you? Doing good. It's right before Thanksgiving here. So, you know, lots of dishes and baking and it smells good upstairs. But yes, yeah, it's a wonderful time of the year. Exactly. So uh, just to let you know that uh, this is being recorded in November of 2020. We're still in 2020, folks. We can't wait to get out of 2020. Indeed. Bring on the new year. I'm over it. (laughs) That's right. So Andrea has just recorded a Christmas album, uh, which uh, we're happy about. I've listened to, and it is so, I am envious of your your voice. I wish I had your voice. I I wish I had, uh, you can have my nasally, pitchy, gravelly voice that I have, my singing voice. So, uh, can't. Well, I, I wish I could about... play guitar. So, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> we'll trade. I'll gladly yeah. trade. Uh, so, uh, do you have a. We just talked about your title, uh, title for yourself. Let's talk about your, your ministry that you not only do you, uh, are a singer, singer songwriter, but, uh, you also, encourage people to be artistic and creative themselves, right? Yes, that's one of my absolute favorite things to do. Um, and that just, it really started a couple of years ago. Um, I, I've been part of my worship ministry at my church, um, my local church for over a decade now, but um, a couple of years ago, I went to a conference in Nashville. Um, the Gettys put on a conference every year called Sing. It's a big, big songwriting conference, um, or not even just songwriting, just worship ministry conference, really. And um, one of the breakout sessions I went to, um, the gal, I wish I, I meant to go look up her name. It's in my notes back from 2018 somewhere. But anyway, she was a, um, she called herself a church curator. Um, She is basically in charge of the creative souls in her church community, which I thought was really cool. Um, and she encouraged us to consider doing, um, doing something to encourage the creativity in our congregations. And um, after, you know, after that conference, you come home, you've got all this information rattling and around in your head and God just wouldn't let that one go. Um, so I reached out to my uh, worship pastor and uh, his wife, and I, I told them that I just, I really thought that would be a really fun thing for our congregational family. And um, after a couple conversations and we planned an event and we reached out to people we knew um, in our congregation that were creative and um, arts for the kingdom events is what we call them there that was born. So we started, gosh, it's actually been almost two years to the day right now we had our first event. and I can talk a little bit more about what those events look like, but um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's what I get to do. Um, uh, we, during COVID days, it's been a little hard to have these events because, you know, can't really gather in person. But um, basically, we've had five events over the past two years, and they're centered around a theme. Um, so I know we've done, uh, I think our first one was Advent. And then we've done the theme of resurrection. We've done the theme of shalom. Uh, we've done the theme of epiphany. And our last one was witness. And basically we invite 
photographers, painters, sculptors, um, crafters to, to meditate on that theme and um, create something kind of centered around it. And they have to write like an artist statement huh. that we, we then present um, as part of the show. So we have all the art set up in the room and then invite everybody to come. And during that evening, we also have a concert portion um, where songwriters, musicians, poets, dramatic readings can, that can all take place. And uh, in our last event, we actually had an Irish dancer too. A young lady did an Irish dance for us. And it was, it's just, it's fun. I, I basically, I'm a party planner, which is why it's so much fun. So it's been really fun to watch um, watch our congregation, our congregation grow in their creativity and really lean into their gifting and honor God through them. Um, it's been really, really a blessing, a huge blessing to me. So. Awesome. And you said you also went through all the Psalms. Yes, that was an awesome project. Our worship pastor was inspired to um, sing more of the Psalms, like actually uh, sing the Psalm text. There's so many great songs written based on Psalms, but there's, there's really a lot of power in singing God's word, not necessarily word for word, but nearly word for word and really weaving God's truth into um, the hearts of um, those that worship. And so he, I think it was, gosh, back in 2015, he uh, had been praying for that to happen somehow. And the spirit basically led him to do it himself. <laughs> so he, um, he was like, okay, let's just start. Let's start on Psalm one. And wow. We're going to sing one psalm a Sunday as a church uh, until we're done. And those familiar with the psalms know that uh, Psalm 119 is super, super long. We did not right. sing the whole, the whole Psalm 119 on one Sunday. We broke that up into 22 Sundays. So we sang wow. um, eight stanzas. Um, and so we, we um, he set out, he started kind of sprung, um, got us into that, found good lyrical settings. Um, there's a lot of really great resources out there on the Psalms. Um, a lot of people have written good lyric settings. Um, and then we, we either set them to familiar melodies to our congregation, um, hymn melodies, or sometimes we created our own melodies to go with them. Um, and then I got involved in that project in the Psalm 60-ish realm. By then, I think he, he had kind of gotten a feel for the project and he knew I, I enjoyed songwriting. And um, I think my first one was Psalm 60, I think. And so it's since, um, since he asked me to do that one and it, it went well, it was really fun. And um, I got to write a few past that. Um, I think I wrote a total of eight Psalm uh, settings during that project, but... Um, yeah, and it, I think we finished up right before we went to the conference in 2018. So it took, you know, a good three years um, to get wow. through it. But we're still singing the Psalms every Sunday. Um, he, we, he makes sure we're singing at least one, if not two. And it's been really, really fun to watch our congregation interact with the Psalms. And, um, and now we have, you know, uh, melodies for them and they're easier to teach to our children. And yeah, um, it, one can come to mind a little bit easier and just the power of music. It's, um, it's really, it's been really fun. Great project to be a part of. That takes so much discipline. I've, I've tried going through the Psalms myself and I didn't go through systematically one through 150. It, I, you know, I have a few Psalms that I've written melodies to Nice. But, you know, it, it's, it's a challenge to make all the Psalms rhyme and in some kind of a meter <laughs> and some kind yeah. of a melody. So yeah, so not all of them work in English. So not all of them work in English. Uh, they, were not. they weren't written in English. So that's right. Yeah, not originally. Really tricky. Yeah. So if, you know, if, if there are churches out there, worship leaders that would love to, you know, dig into those resources. We have, we have everything available um, to extend to churches. And we've actually, we've done all of, um, now we're going back and recording all of them. Um, and we just had our last recording session a couple of weekends ago. 
Um, and I think we, we got recordings done through Psalm 94 or something like that. So we're not quite, we don't have solid recordings of all of them yet, but um, right. we're getting there. We're going to keep going until we finish. So, um, but yeah, I would love to, you know, we can, we can uh, put links in the show notes and stuff to some of those resources and um, yeah, we'd love to see more churches singing the Psalms for sure. Awesome. So you also took a trip to Nashville to hobnob with some <laughs> rub elbows, right? That's right. Elbow rubbing. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, that was really tell, fun. Yeah. Tell us about that. Yeah, that was through, um, well, I, I, I went down for a conference in October um, of 2020 here. So I was kind of surprised that we actually pulled it off, that we were actually able to meet. It was a small conference, and I guess that was to our benefit there. Um, but it was in the Franklin area, so just south of Nashville, south, I think. Um, but that was through, it was put on by Nashville Christian Songwriters. And twice a year, they host these in-person conferences for songwriters um, that, you know, they don't even have to be members of the organization, but you're invited oh. to come and um, you can learn from industry professionals. Um, I got to meet John Mays, um, uh, Meredith Andrews and her husband, Jacob Suter were there. Um, uh, Jeff Nelson was a, a producer I met. Uh, David Baroni was, it was just, it was really cool. Um, the people that uh, came and poured into us um, during that time, just to encourage us in our songwriting and um, at that conference, you're also able to come and bring a couple songs with you um, and sit in on uh, a group critique. So the, the coach uh, will play your song for the group and then work with you kind of one-on-one -on -one, uh, to kind of model um, how, to, how to look at your song uh, objectively and, and, and massage it and um, tweak things. And um, it, it's really, critique is a really interesting uh, thing to enter into. I'm, I'm in the midst of um, an eight-week coaching session with Nashville Christian Songwriters right now, and it's week by week we, we submit songs and are receiving critique and feedback, and um, critique's hard. <laughs> critique is, uh, you know, our songs are our babies, so whenever you when you get feedback and it sometimes it stings a little bit or it, um, but I think the thing that I'm really enjoying with Nashville Christian songwriters is um, the heart behind the critique isn't just, you know, um, I guess what, what I'm trying, they're Christians, they're Christian men, they've been in the industry for years and their, their desire is to empower us to be better Christian songwriters. And they, um, they're, they're constantly encouraging us to dig in to our relationship with God and to, to have our songs flow out of that. And um, so while, you know, critique is hard, uh, uh, I'm, I'm seeing the benefits of um, educating, you know, opening myself up to that education and um, just listening to what they have to say. Um, Nobody likes to be told that their their song baby is no good. Uh, but if you trust the process, like oh I've been, baby. right? Oh, what do you mean you don't like it? And, uh, my baby does nothing wrong. <laughs> exactly. So, oh, it's it's hard. But like the song that I, you know, if we get a chance, I'll I'll share today. Uh, for example, this song uh, I think I've edited at least five times through this critique process and. Right looking at it now compared to where it started um, and just trusting the process, trusting what they've told me to consider doing for it. Uh, I really, you know, I, I don't recognize the old song anymore. It's like, you know, what it has become feels so much more solid. Um, it, it feels complete and it, it feels like it could be an even bigger blessing to those that it might reach someday um, mm. because it's well-crafted and it's, it's organized. And, and that's something, you know, if anybody wants to dig into, you know, learning more about songwriting, 
I encourage them to, you know, look into Nashville Christian songwriters because there you, you really do, you dig into, um, or they, they really teach you to dig into the, the methodology behind songwriting. You know, there's a, there's an actual structure to songs and, um, if, you know, really it makes you, uh, when you educate yourself in that way, you also listen to songs differently. You start paying attention to, uh, you know, a popular song, like what, what's happening in this song to, you know, to make it connect with people. And then you can take all that, that you're gleaning and observing and apply it to your own work. And, um, so it's, it's a painful, you know, educating ourselves in any way is painful. <laughs> you know, yeah. my son, my son is an eight year old learning multiplication right now. It's painful. It's very painful. So, uh, is it painful for him or for you? <laughs> both. <laughs> So it's, you know, evidence of growth though, right? Yeah. You know, um, so I, yeah, I highly recommend Nashville Christian Songwriters. And uh, just as a teaser, we, we will have uh, the president of Nashville Christian Songwriters on the podcast. Oh. Um, one of the episodes coming up. So Ooh, can look forward awesome. to that. Yeah. So, yeah. Excellent. So what triggered you to move in the direction of uh, the, music creative curator of your church yeah I really you know past just that that conference um you know hearing about uh the power of encouraging people I think once I started to even reach out to artists in my congregation and offer that opportunity for them to to create and share um man I I just I completely fell in love with encouraging people uh, and watching them come alive in their own gifting. And uh, there's just nothing like watching somebody use their gifts that God has given them to create something beautiful that points all praise and glory right back to the one who gave them those gifts. It's just, it's unlike anything Amen. else. And so um I don't know when our next event's going to be. And that's so hard because of COVID stuff. And we're, right. we're hoping to have our next one in April, but um, you know, we just don't know, but we, we trust that somehow, even if it's like we have to do stuff over the internet and, you know, have, I don't know, walk around the sanctuary, you know, viewing art from a screen. I don't, it's going to be interesting. We got to be kind of um, creative and flexible. We've got to be creative with our creativity. So um, we'll make it work, but I, I really, uh, I have to thank the the worship pastor and his wife um, for really helping realize that that vision, that that desire that God put on my heart. Um, because I I don't do it alone. Um, there's a there is an army of uh, friends that make it happen too. And um, event planning is hard, <laughs> and. Uh, coordinating you know working with artists can be a little tricky too uh, yeah I know, you know we're I'm all sorry kinda... <laughs> I apologize <laughs> we're all kind of you know we're all kind of our own unique people and that's the beauty of it but uh yeah I've learned uh that uh it's hard to encourage some of them too you know it's some people don't believe in their craft yet mm. um mm. And they don't, uh, they don't sometimes believe even that what they could offer is worth sharing. And I think as far as, you know, anything I've come up against in this ministry work is um, how can I help people pass that? How can I help them grow and in confidence in their craft? And um as far as education goes, that's something I, I, I feel like I need to learn a little bit more about. Um, I know one of our other podcast hosts, uh, Lynn, she is a um, kind of like a life coach, it seems like. Yeah. So I, I almost, I think I need to learn from her a bit because yeah. she, every time you Soak talk to her, up. she's just super encouraging and like, okay, I believe yeah. in myself now. So I think I need to take some beats from Lynn too. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's talk about, let's go to the inspire section and right. we'll talk about what inspires Andrea. <laughs> uh, 
You know, I, I live in Alaska, so I, I could say that uh, life throws me a lot of curveballs up here. Um, it's a pretty wild place to live. And I think, you know, I was looking back through some of my, my work and um, I really believe that a lot of the messages that come across in my work are inspired by just doing life up here, um, raising a family, uh, being a wife, um, trusting in, in God's provision and his protection. And, um, you know, I, I've really grown to love, um, journaling, uh, when I, when I'm trying to navigate something or, or learn something, um, or even just wrestle with something with God, I, I go to journaling a lot and that's just, you know, just write and don't stop, don't edit, just, just write it all out. Um, and to really just try to pay attention to, um, what's flowing out, like what, what are the concerns of my heart? And then, you know, along with journaling to, to listen well, like if, if I hear something uh, that the spirit is pouring into my heart repetitively or just trying to encourage me with, um, try to pay attention to that. And uh, so I, I'd say as far as inspiration, you know, definitely reading God's word, the word is full of encouragement and um, it points to the character of God and that those are messages that we need to have in our work and in our own hearts. Um, but I, I really, I enjoy teaching people what God's teaching me. Oh. Um, so I, I've kind of seen that almost as my, my ministry through my music is um, pouring out what's been poured into me, I guess, uh, is a way to put that, uh, an image, if you, if you would, but uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I love it. You can't, you can't give what you haven't received. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And it's, you know, it's, it's not ours to keep necessarily if, you know, yes, God exactly. gives us something, um, we, we are his hands and feet. We are a reflection of him in this world. And so um, I think it's, it's an act of obedience too, honestly. Yeah. All right. Where did you begin and what were the steps to where you are now? Uh, so goodness, I, if, if anybody like digs into who I am and my bio, uh, I, I actually, I'm trained as a civil engineer. <laughs> wow. Um, yeah. It's amazing. So you, you draw roads. <laughs> Well, I, I have, uh, I'm, mostly, I'm mostly a water resource engineer. So okay. things like pipes underground, um, the stuff that you don't see, but you really need. So I did not um, know that. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? So it's funny, you know, to like, you know, I know in the comic book world, you'd probably call it the origin story. Like that, you know, this is so digging back, um, as far as music goes, it's been a part of my life, um, in the midst of all, you know, every direction I've gone. Um, my parents were really kind to um, provide piano lessons for me early on. I think I started in first grade and, but um, much to the frustration of them and my teachers, I much preferred to play by ear instead of uh, read what was on the page. And I'd go right. home and I'd memorize it and then come back and look at my hands and they're like, you're not even reading anyway. So <laughs> Uh, I play by ear, which is a blessing and a curse sometimes. So, right. um, but then uh, I started singing kind of in high school. Uh, my first gig was, uh, I was Bloody Mary in South Pacific. It was really fun. Um, but then I, I never really merged the two, uh, cr you know, uh, playing the piano and singing and creating my own music until much later. Um, I'd say even end of college days, um, in the early two thousands, I'm kind of aging myself there, but, um, I, it was really fun. I, I dabbled in just, you know, creating a little bit, but I never, I, I didn't really own that as an identity, um, huh. as a, a creator, a songwriter, um, until my husband's grandfather, bless his heart, 
he, um, he was a poet and just kind of dabbled in poetry, but he one day, uh, sweet, sweet old man, um, he knew I played piano and I loved to sing and um, he hands me one of his poems. It was on, you know, just yellow legal pad paper. And he said, I've always wanted this to be a song. Do you think that's something you could do? And uh, I just, I, I look back at that now and I go, wow, the amount of um, trust he had in me to do something like that. Uh, and just, it's so fun to watch God weave moments like that, simple, simple moments into our lives that springboard us into something bigger. Um, so that song was my first song, really. Um, oh, awesome. And I didn't, didn't write the lyrics, but it was really fun. And I think it really kind of made that, um, that craft come alive in me. So since then I've written, you know, dozens of songs, but um, that one's really special. Um, yeah, it was really special. Just recently I had my family help me record that song uh, to gift it to my mother-in-law um, on uh, my husband's grandfather's birthday uh, that was just in October. So just fun to, you know, have that as a, uh, a great memory and a something to really thank God for directing in my life. So. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Let's move to the educate section. Right. What did you not know when you got started that you had to learn? A whole lot. <laughs> you know, it, it's funny because as a civil engineer, you know, I, all my training, all my education, my formal education was very science and math and um, I still, I, I still love that. I still love using that side of my brain. Um, but I, I've really had to seek out educating myself, um, to do the work that I do now, um, songwriting, uh, home recording. Um, you know, I, I had to, I had to learn how to make a microphone talk to garage band for example that was that was yep. painful <laughs> and um and then i had to learn how to how to mix things and make it sound good right um i had to you know i had to learn how to um create sheet music in finale you know if 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 um and i and i think there's a way to do it like if you use something like final cut pro or um maybe even a way in GarageBand to have it spit out sheet music for you. But um, sometimes as you're creating music or, you know, getting ready to record something, it's really nice to have it already on sheet music yeah. um, or, you know, available to hand it to a group to perform with you at church or. Um, right. So learning a, a program like Finale um, was very helpful, very painful process, but um, finding people that are a step ahead of you <laughs> in some of those things too, and being willing to um, glean from them and, and just learn, just take baby steps and just dive in. And a um, lot of YouTube tutorial demos uh, have been viewed. Um, and then just a lot of trial and error. Um, you know, my whole Christmas album was recorded here in my studio. So, and I, I should probably say, you're in the midst of, you're seeing here, if you're watching this, I'm in the midst of remodeling my studio and I have four paint colors that I'm trying out. I think this one's the winner down here. Okay. So that, that's what's happening right here. <laughs> I like the blue green one. I know my daughter's, she's like, this is my favorite mom. I'm like, oh, I don't know. It's hard to decorate around. <laughs> but anyway, it's, not um, it's it's, it's good to have a space. Like, um, I've learned, I've been in so many different rooms in my house to try to do recordings. And now I'm kind of trying to own the space down here. And, um, you learn about like different sounds in a room and where you might need acoustic panels. You just kind of dig into that kind of stuff and just try mm. to learn as you go, just try things. And, um, but I, and, and again, something like Nashville Christian Songwriters, tons of resources in a, in a community like that. 
um, just to learn. And they, they hold um, master classes once a month that on a topic, I think this month it's gonna be uh, on recording home demos, um, giving you tips on how to do that. So um, those have been really, really helpful too. And just slowly but surely uh, giving me the confidence to do my work, so. Awesome. Yeah. So do you find that you learn from the the church members that you become your student that you were trying to encourage and what's what 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 have you learned from the people that you are teaching oh man that's such a good question um i think one of the biggest things i've learned in working with the creative people in my congregation is um an appreciation for different art forms um, and um, and like anytime I look at any art or hear any song or um, or try to encourage an artist to grow in confidence to actually share I just I think I've learned the the beauty of um, we're all so different. We're all so unique. Uh, no art is bad art, maybe is a good way to put that. And that there's beauty in everything that we create. And it doesn't even have to be a painting. It can be, um, oh, one, I forgot to mention, one of my favorite dimensions of the Arts for the Kingdom events is our culinary creator. Oh, so we have oh, people yes. bring food. It's awesome. <laughs> and um, like my one of my dear friends, she makes the most beautiful bread. Um, and, and just uh, that art uh, is any expression that, you know, we, when we pour into something, creating something with our hands, using gifts, talents, resources that God's provided. It's an ex it's expression of thanks to him. And, you know, I, um, not that I ever thought like, oh, that's a really ugly painting or that's a, you know, I don't, I don't believe I ever thought badly of any art, but it's really deepened my appreciation for any creative work. Um, yeah. So I think that's, that's one of the biggest things I've learned uh, from, and just, you know, that encouragement holds so much weight in our mm. lives. Um, mm. And it's made me want to encourage just more and more and more. <laughs> so. All right. Let's talk about empower. Let's empower some people. What are your suggestions to other creatives generally and in the creative inspiration niche? So what are your suggestions to people who are trying to encourage others to be creative? Yeah, I, I really like this question because it, I think it was a good reminder to me too, um, that, you know, I've talked a lot about how, how difficult it is to encourage others sometimes. Um, and, and even when I find myself um, a little frustrated in my work or losing sight um, of why I'm doing what I'm doing. Because, you know, art takes effort, um, especially uh, crafting good art. It can take a lot of effort and educating and um, trying new things. It's, it's painful. But um, I think one of my biggest suggestions would be to, um, to lean into your unique expression of art, mm. your voice your style, um, something I look back early on uh, as I was just kind of starting to dabble in songwriting, I was, um, I was compared to Enya, those that are oh. familiar with her work. Um, and I was compared to her in a negative way. Oh, <laughs> yeah. And, you know, it, which was hard because I, I enjoyed her work. I think her, I think her work is beautiful and I, and I do yeah. see similarities in our work. Um, and so that really stuck with me, you know, that I was, I was compared to her, but not in a good way. And then just recently, 
uh, the president of Nashville Christian Songwriters himself was trying to help me um, lean into my style, my voice. Um, and he compared me to her again, but in a <laughs> good way, it was, it was like, no, that's good. And it was like such a redemptive moment for me. A like, lot of people like Enya. So a lot of people do. And I, I have found that uh, when I sit and I create, that's what flows out of me. And that, that's, that's good. You know, if um, I, I cannot beatbox. Uh, for those that don't know Bill, I, he is, it's so fun. My kids just thought all of those snippets that you sent me when we were creating the theme song were awesome. And I'm oh, like, okay. sorry, kids, <laughs> I can't do that. So um, when I talk about you, Bill, it's uh, uh, like, wh wh which one's Bill? I mean, he's my beatboxing friend. And they just think that's awesome. So that's right. To lean into that, like, I can't beatbox and that's okay. I can, I can, I can create something comforting. I can create something soothing. I can create something deep and um, lament seems to be the flavor that I, I tend to reside in more often than not. And that's okay. And I'm, I'm really enjoying owning that voice a bit more and leaning into that because that's how I was created to be creative and um, if we try to be too much like somebody else, we can lose sight yes. of that. Um, right, exactly. So I would, I would encourage people lean into who you are, uh, discover your voice, your, um, and, and just walk in it and trust that God has you doing that unique work for a reason. So, yeah, exactly. All right. So, uh, you're going to play something for us, correct? I can, absolutely. Uh, tell us about what you're going to play. So I think I mentioned earlier that this song, it's it's been very much edited. Uh, so this I first, is the song. This is, yeah. So this song, um, it's called Be With Me. And it was born out of this past summer. I've learned to listen better in prayer to, to enter into prayer, almost in a posture of listening rather than talking. <laughs> and, um, and I, you know, this, this season has been hard on, in a lot of ways, um, on a lot of us. And even now, like I'm supposed to be in Colorado right now, uh -huh. visiting my family uh -huh. for Thanksgiving. And I'm obviously not, uh, and that's hard. You know, there's, there's a, there's a dimension of loneliness that can creep in and really discourage us. And um, so I wanted to write something that really spoke to when we're in that, that, um, that place of loneliness or uh, pain or sorrow, we can invite, well, and it's, it's, it's kind of a, it's an interesting song in that I do believe that God is ever present. He's always with us. Uh, but we have a tendency to not always be with him, if that makes sense. Right. Um, so this song very much seeks to invite him in to, um, to have that conversation with us, to bring us comfort. And so, yeah, and just an encouragement to those that um, like to write songs, but, um, and sometimes songs, they feel done the moment that you have them down on the page, but um, don't um, don't be afraid to rewrite and to recraft and to rethink something. And yep. um, because I the state that it was in back in October when I first took it to Nashville for critique, um, it's not in that same state. And last night when I presented it to the coaches, um, one of them, he muted his microphone and he sung along. Uh -huh. And that to me was, it was a huge blessing. It was like, okay, he, he is even now owning this song. Um, he is enjoying it. And I just the progression of that. So anyway, so this I can, and the audio is not going to be the greatest, but um, I think by, by the time this comes out, I will have uh, done a, a demo at home here and probably even a lyric video that we can attach 
um, okay. a link to so we can get that out to everybody. But so we'll see. can I just say one thing that yeah. you, said, you said songs are babies, but <laughs> babies need to grow and mature and they, do. they don't stay babies forever. So yeah, just for sure. they were created in one form doesn't mean that they have to stay in that original form. Yeah, so, they need nurturing. They need Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's been a fun process. It's been um it's been painful, I'll put it that <laughs> way. <laughs> but I I really I believe that the pain was worth it. So uh yeah, I hope it's yeah, I hope you guys can hear it okay. And if not, you know, we'll get the lyric video out there. But I think it'll give you a sense for what it's all about. So this is Excellent. be with me. I need to feel your peace tonight and hear your voice. As sorrow draws me here through the dark, I see your light. I know you're near. Oh, hear my cry. Father, come and be with me. My broken heart, Father, come and meet me in this place. Come and be with me. I come away to hear. Silence all defeating noises. A prayer, but I don't speak a word. And listening there, your love is heard. Father, come and be with me. Come and heal my broken heart. Father, come and meet me in this place. Come and be with me. When the sadness beckons me, you alone can bring me peace. When deep shadows surround Father, hear my plea. Father, come and be with me. Come and heal my broken heart. Father, come and meet me in this place. Come and be with me. Father, come. broken heart. Father, come and meet me in this place. Come and be with me. Father, come and be with me. Yay. Thank you. Yeah. Now you can fun hear clap. Now I can hear you clap. <laughs> that was yeah, awesome. That was fun. Thanks. That'll be fun to get that one out uh, and share with everybody. So I think it's a good message that maybe a lot of people need to hear right now. I trust that God will take it where it needs to go. So. Amen. So uh, shall we pray? Mm. Let us pray. 
Father God, I thank you for this time. Thank you that uh, Andrea was able to, uh, to meet with me. Uh, we thank you for meeting with us and uh, we pray that uh, her hearts will be, many hearts will be affected by her music and for her mu music ministry to grow, her creativity curation project to grow and uh, uh, it's just the name of your the name of your son that we pray. Amen. Amen. Andrea Sandefer. Yeah. That's uh, <laughs> where can we where can we find your music, Andrea? Uh, I have a website uh, that talk about something I've had to learn. Uh, so crafting a website not easy, but <laughs> it's been it's been good to kind of get that up and running. Um, I guess that's another tip, like songwriters out there, if you're looking to share your music, Band Zoogle is a really oh. good resource, um, a good website builder. So I just built a new website on there. Uh, it's called andreasandifermusic.com and we can link to that. But, um, and then I am officially on Spotify and uh, Apple Music and all that stuff yeah. now. That's That's kind of new as of this Christmas album. So uh, as I create more music, they'll be on those platforms as well. Um, I'm on Instagram and Facebook pretty often and love to share stuff on there. And um, I do send out a newsletter once a month. So if you're on my website, you can sign up to receive that. And um, I try to give uh, mailing list people, friends, uh, discounts on stuff and first dibs on merchandise and stuff like that too. So it'd be fun to connect with people on there. Excellent. Thank you, Andrea. Thank you. Can't wait to hear more from you as a host and as a musician as well. This has been Bill Brooks for Creatively Christian. Join us next time when we introduce another Creative Christian. May God's grace be with you. Creatively Christian is a product of Theophany Media. You can find out more at theophanymedia.com. This show is hosted by Brandon Hollingsworth, Andrea Sandifer, Bill Brooks, and Lynn Baber. Our logo is by Bill Brooks. Our music is by Bill Brooks and Andrea Sandifer. To join our exclusive patron community, which includes bonus episodes and so much more, go to theophanymedia.com forward slash creatively Christian. Have a blessed day and keep on creating for our Lord.